The Starbucks Pistachio Latte will transport you to your happy place. The comforting flavor of pistachio, warm espresso and milk, all with a brown buttery topping. Make today a good day. Order ahead on the Starbucks app. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Hey kids, do you like professional wrestling? Oh, we like professional wrestling too. This is Shake Them Ropes. I am Jeff Hawkins. He is Chris Novembrino. We're going to try and get through this one together. It's going to be a toughie for me at least. Um, Starting, I mean, look, I'm just going to go into it. Uh, Jay Briscoe, a.k.a. Jamin Pugh, killed in a two-vehicle accident in Laurel, Delaware. He was driving his daughters to, I believe, cheerleading practice, or he was picking picking them up from cheerleading practice. Car in the other lane swerves over, head-on collision. Jay Briscoe, not wearing a seatbelt, died instantly at the scene. Both of his daughters were injured. One, we're hoping, is not paralyzed, but she had surgery. The other's in stable condition. Jay Briscoe, dead at the age of 38. Uh, look, I didn't know Jay Briscoe. I had met him a couple times. Very nice person, prince of a man. But, you know, it's always in social settings, and it's not really, you know, really a deep conversation necessarily. It's a hi, bye, good to meet you, who are you type of thing. So for me to eulogize Jay Briscoe and career highlights, because I'm going to be honest, I don't want, I didn't watch a lot of Ring of Honor at its height. I didn't watch a lot of Ring of Honor. I watched a lot of Jay Briscoe, and I watched a lot of the Briscoes, and I watched a lot of their promos, and I watched a lot of their matches. But I'm not going to be able to do his career justice, and I will admit that up front. That said, a lot of this is going to be mine and Chris's uh, thoughts on him through our own fandom. And if you're saying, well, you're making it about you, you shouldn't make it about you, well, we kind of have to. Because it's it's how his death personally affects both of us. So I will also give that disclaimer before I go into my opinions. But if you've listened to this show for any amount of time, you know that my two favorite acts in wrestling currently are the Briscoes and FTR. Jay Briscoe, to me, is the last great pro wrestler on earth who exhibits that kind of toughness and menace that I think is missing in so many promos today because we just have lost the art of the promo. A guy who could talk you into the building and make you believe that he wanted to kill the other team on the team on the other side or the wrestler on the other side. Um, we of course all know that, that deep down inside he wasn't his character. He was a, he was a, he was a sweet family man who worked on a chicken farm, his family's chicken farm. Um, but I'll tell you after Chris, after, after getting this news and just sitting on it for a while, I came very close to this being the last shake them ropes because my wrestling fandom just between FDR leaving and now the death of Jay Briscoe and the possibility, and this hasn't been spoken about either, but look, Jay and Mark are tight. They entered the business together, even when Mark was underage. Mark Briscoe may not wrestle after this because the stress and the and just the mental mentality of his brother not being there may be too much. So there was a part of me that pondered saying, okay, that's it. It's it's far too much for me to handle. And I don't want to talk about wrestling anymore because this is also the first death really of an active performer who's younger than I am. Um I think the last one that really affected me hard was Benoit. And then of course, then all the information about Benoit came in you started to hate him after that. And you felt for Nancy Sullivan and stuff, but they were still older than me when they passed. This is the first one where it's like, he's not even a, I mean, he's 
too young to be a contemporary of mine, but still it's like 38 is way too young. Uh, I will expound more, but I want to give Chris a chance to get in here since I haven't had him yet. Yeah. So Hawkins is definitely more of the Briscoe's aficionado than me, but uh, earlier you were talking about how you didn't really watch ring of honor and I would try off and on, but I always found the production quality to be really inconsistent to the point that I just couldn't really enjoy the program. But the one thing that insofar as I saw ring of honor things on a regular basis, the one thing that I usually saw were Briscoe promos and Jay Briscoe is not breaking novel ground or anything. Again, it's just my take on it uh, was just captivating. There are some people who with just their eye contact into a camera and just their body language can exude like menace and intensity. Mm -hmm. And there's this one promo. I I forget who they're even cutting it against. And I can't really like do an impression of it because it's basically all profanities and stuff, but like, it's the way he delivers it. It's scary. You're like scared for your life. The way he's like, you know, rattling off everything that he is. He is a method actor in many, many ways. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example because it, it was one of those things where he was, it, it's a promo where it's, uh, where it's the, the Briscoes go hunting for young bucks. I think it's the title of it. And it's really the first one in 2011. I mean, there were a couple ones before that where they were, you know, still very clean shaven, but this is the one where they're starting to, they're starting to get their little haggard look going. They've dropped the, the unfortunate Confederate flag gear that they used to wear. And, and, it uh it, it's uh, it, it's i think it's called young buck or briscoe's go hunting for young bucks and they have a truckload full of dead chickens that have died of disease or whatever because of the close quarters of chicken farming and whatnot and he starts say young bucks we're gonna kill you mother effers <laughs> whatever so he starts cussing cussing and it, it's recorded on like a, a phone video or an old camera or stuff like that and i think his wife is the one who, who literally says Jamin, which, you know, that, breaking the fourth wall a little bit to, to calm down the actual performer behind it. And you can just see him kind of, kind of look at the camera at that moment and smirk and go, what? <laughs> As if, why are you ruining this take to say that? And she's like, we can't use any of this. <laughs> and he gets so mad. He's like, it's because of the effing, effing swearing on here. Man, F that. He just, he just doubles down on it and continues the promo. I think he storms off at that point, of course. And then Mark, who, I mean, his job was always to temper Jay's wildness with his own weird goofiness, which is what yes, always but like made. his goofiness had like a certain level a of menace, menace too. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, they, they were like, you know, something out of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they kind of like captured that classic uh, evil duo thing where you have the really menacing, scary one. And then you have the one who's quote unquote the comic relief, but is still really scary. Like they might tell a joke before throwing a knife into your chest. Well, not just that. It would be one of those things where it's like you're sitting there and he goes, hey, man, you ever tried like something like like something just dangerous or something that would kill you? It's like, uh, you know, have, have you ever tried like swimming in a pool full of banana pudding. It's like, no, man, are you kidding about that? No, but I mean, have you? Would you want to? You want to do it right now? We'll do it. You know, that kind of thing. It's like, you know, like, hold on. You're being way too intense about this very, very stupid thing where you just kind of go, whoa, hold on. Hey, man, you ever stuck a stuck a chainsaw up your butt? No, nah, man, that would kill me. Yeah, yeah but, You ever eaten a live rat? Have you? You yeah, want, you, you want, I got, yeah, I got, he pulls, yeah. pulls one out of his pocket. Yeah, pulls, yeah. Like, he just happens to have one. Yeah, no, that's, yes, that's perfect. Um, matches offhand. Um, look, his, his solo program as world champion really put him into another hemisphere, in my opinion. The matches against Adam Cole, you know, the usual suspects. I mean, the latter wars match with the Briscoes versus Steen Erico is legendary. Uh, Kevin Steen and El Generico, for those of you who may only watch WWE, that's Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. <laughs> bacon, like you might find in a bacon lesson tomato sandwich, but you never know. We might have new listeners here this week. Um, look, the, the FTR stuff was sublime all this last year. I mean, you can go back and there's stuff on YouTube from their time in Noah. 
They did New Japan. Uh, they were the Never Trios champions with Toru Yano, of all things, which, you know, goes into my love because I just loved all, all three of them at the time. Uh, they eventually got to travel around a little bit. They they very early on were at PWG shows that I was going to, which is where I got to chat a little bit with them. And then eventually the cost to fly out to California, I think, became too expensive or they just decided screw Super Dragon and no showed a few times. But I believe they were they had they had made up and they were scheduled to be at one late last year at a PWG show and they had to cancel because of a booking or because somebody got COVID in the family or something like that, which is real unfortunate. They did make their way back to LA through GCW and I'm kicking myself. I did not go to those shows when I had the chance, which will be, you know, a common theme of this, but they were mostly just ring of honor guys. In addition to just this last indie run after ring of honor went out of business. Well, why is that? Because, well, we have to be honest Jay was very opinionated, especially when it came to talking to his kid about certain subjects, had some very problematic tweets that were homophobic, and those followed him for 10 years. And he couldn't get a job with WWE or AEW when they wanted him. That is why they did not do a video tribute to him last night on AEW Dynamite, because Time Warner would not allow that. But hey, stay tuned for Dana White's slap fighting league. Right after AEW Dynamite, a good wholesome family show, and I think uh, uh, on that on that note, I, earlier this week I still saw people um using Dana White quotes for inspirational stuff, and I was just like, "What the hell are we doing here?" Yeah, yeah, and yeah. to me, I think look, the the Briscoes have been one of the great tag teams of the last tw- last twenty years, and I do not want to speak about Mark in the past tense, but it is the to me a great tragedy that they were not able to take this act and those promos onto a national stage. And even though wrestling does not reward great promos anymore, really in terms of getting guys into the building, I think it would have been a boom period for the Briscoes personally and financially in either WWE. And if you want to see how that went, go, go watch their, uh, go watch their promo called cosmetically pleasing and about the notes they got from people there nor aew in this new venture because i think i think a build on that show would have been so many buys because jay could talk you into a building and i think you know that that to me will be the underappreciated tragedy in addition to the actual tragedy of losing a performer who was really coming into they they say your money years are, are your late thirties for the most part, after you've been in the business for a while. And I think he was really coming into his money years as we speak. He wasn't declining physically despite all the injuries. He could talk, they could draw. They were top line in all the indies they were at, but they never really got the quote unquote, Glenn Gary leads. They never got the million dollar paydays or contracts or stuff that would have set up their families for lives. And I think that's a, an a- absolute tragedy. Yeah, for as much as Jay Briscoe was able to accomplish, you do certainly think that they could have done more. Now, regarding the WWE run, I just don't think it was going to work with what Vince McMahon wanted. No, I agree with you there. Now, And I, I just, before we start talking about consequences in the cancellation of Jay Briscoe. I, I, I want to stop and go, if we really think about the history of where that company was at at that time, it would have been fascinating to see the Briscoes feud with the Shield. Fascinating to see them feud with the Wyatts. But we didn't even get a good Wyatts Shield feud out of that company. And so- I believe they were rumored to be part of the Wyatt clan on the, on the uh, main roster. If yeah. if they could have gone through NXT, and I mean, I think the NXT run would have been something special. Yes, it would have been. They, they were doing a lot of great tag team wrestling in NXT at that time. So right. I, I mean, no, that that would have been really good. Um, but I I just didn't. I don't think like looking back that it was ever going to line up like that for them there at that time. Now, as to Briscoe's comments specifically, how long 
they had to pay for them and, and the depth that they had to pay for them. I am a believer that you can't like live without consequences. And it unnerves me that it seems like we have like two tracks right now when it comes to how we react to people saying doing bad things. One where they're effectively sentenced to the land of Nod, never to return, and we will never see them or hear from them again. And there's sort of no calibration on like level of badness or repentance. And then there's the other extreme that seems to be going on where you can just say bad things and you might even get rewarded for it. Uh, and I think with the Briscoes here, at a certain point, you have to go like, how much professional damage is correct or is commensurate with the crime. I think that the punishment for the Briscoes did not meet the nature of the crime. And I, I say that specifically, like there was too much punishment. Like these guys were punished for too long. And I think we should maybe use this as an opportunity to really think about how we're doing these sorts of things. Well, yeah. Um, I, I will say this. And in retrospect, the greatest crime Jay Briscoe ever committed in terms of this in terms of after after deciding to change himself was not self-promoting look how much i've changed he just did it and it's admirable but at the same time he didn't get enough credit for it either it's one of those things where look he actively was repentant and actively did the work and yeah and i'll build on this that that if we're going to ask people to change y'all and they change, they need to be rewarded for it. If that's, I, I, if that's, I agree. The, if that's the ask. I, I, and I mean, in the same way that like when people are recalcitrant about it, okay, yeah, sure, you ratchet up the heat. But if someone actually does the work and, they, and we ask them to change and they change, I don't know, at a certain point. I'm also of the opinion it's not up to us to get people punished. I, I know that's... that's... <sighs> It's it's impossible to say, but it's like we don't need to add to that. And there was somebody on the F4W board that brought up the hey, remember this, you know, as if as if, you know, now's the time in death to really reflect on somebody's worst moment or whatever. And just I <laughs> I'm a moderator over there, so I almost just came close to just killing his account completely for doing that kind of thing. But that's been his move with other tragedies and things like that too so it's just one of those things where it's just like dude i'm glad that you're such a better person that no one will ever say a terse word about you but the man just died now is not the time to bring up his his the thing that he will be remembered worst he, he, for. he died in a tragic accident no less it wasn't like you know it wasn't drugs. It wasn't right. I mean, no yeah, yeah, no, 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 not that not that that it would even be thing. okay, yeah. right? Yeah, right, right. That wouldn't even be right. But, but. like, an, like a, a tragic sort of freak accident. It like, I, I mean, if an anvil had fallen from the sky and killed him, you, you really going to bring it up? It was non wrestling related in every way. Yeah. Are yes. you really going to bring up like the worst thing the man ever did? Like, yeah, a steel beam falls from a construction site. Let us reflect on this horrible thing he once said. Jesus. Yeah, I know. Like, it was on. just, like, man, why are, but you know, You're not doing the good thing here. <laughs> He's not as good as you all say he is. Well, dude. I actually, I, you know, I think I can assess someone as being a good artist or a bad artist and also make a moral assessment of them and they can be on parallel tracks. I have I have the bandwidth in my mind to be able to do these two things separately. Yeah, but if you're in your 20s or if you're just got a screw loose, you can't. And I get it. I mean, I just <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, hey man, not everybody even knows that the person's dead yet and you're all over here going, well, we can't cry too hard because he once said this terrible thing and did these terrible things, but you know who forgave him? Everybody who worked with him. Did you No. then shut up. You know, it's that kind of thing. It's like, it's up to the people who have to work with him and who have to put their trust in him to do it. It's not up to his fan base or whatever to forgive him. It, it's up to him to get that kind of forgiveness. And look, Effie, wrote something just near and dear to my heart about Jay Briscoe. That's good enough for me. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, uh, and, and most 
I don't didn't see a single terse thing from anybody who was actually a worker in wrestling in in the LGBT community. I wanted to get the letters right. I don't think I did. I'm I apologize. LGBTQI. You Thank you. Yeah, you um you know, all the Nobody who actually worked in the business said anything bad about him. It was only people who are fanboys who want to, you know, edge lords who want to get their their digs in. And you're just like, you know, I mean, but that happens in all realms of showbiz slash showbiz adjacent stuff. It's like, I just, I knew it was coming, and I'm still mad about it. That's about <laughs> because I'm just like, guys, just let's 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 remember. Remember the joy he brought people in his wrestling, and you know the the things that and look, he his family is just gonna be a wreck right now. I mean, it, and they were all wrestling fans, and a lot of them were involved in angles of Ring of Honor. His father, Papa Briscoe, if you remember the fight at the farm, and there's also something with the the Hardys. I believe I remember. Um, I believe actor Nick Searcy was on the other side, you know, seconding the Hardys against you know the Briscoes with Papa Briscoe in his corner, you know, and and it's a close knit type of farming community that my dad kind of that my dad grew up on, so it's it's really affecting me hard that way. I think uh, his mom is on the school board and was a former teacher. His dad coached high school football out there. It's just. I I there are no words that I can say to adequately thank Jay Briscoe for helping me with my wrestling fandom. I I just know that the the amount of loss I have from him not being in wrestling anymore and not being around anymore and knowing that that's it. But I think the one solace I do take and I, I came upon this as I was trying to gather my thoughts, which, you know, if you've been listening to me rambling right now, aren't that gathered, but nevertheless, is that his last match was that double dog collar against FTR, which I called the match of the year, and which a lot of people called the match of the year. And the artist side of me goes, man, if you just painted your masterpiece and that's all we have left, there are far, far worse things in terms of your legacy that could be done than to go out on top like that. And, uh, you know, it's like writing a brilliant three-minute pop song. And then and then that's 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 what, you, what we have. Um, yeah, Chris, any other thoughts? I mean, on one hand, I feel like every artist would love to go out on a high water mark of their art rather than to live to the point of see their art become crappy soda jingles <laughs> right but but <laughs> when your music becomes soda jingles jeff that means you've made a lot of money that's true get paid i can't can't knock it sorry <laughs> so th there's that but also it just only for me heightens the tragedy like like jay briscoe was this terribly under for as much success as he had in ring of honor we didn't get to see him on better cameras on a brighter stage with better lighting and it, it, this it really felt like there should have been a moment for him and we didn't get to have that and he he was good enough to have that and having a great match with FTR only further suggested that there was a lot more to be done. And I remember the tone of the show when we talked about him, you know, like less than a month ago, where it's like, we didn't like look at the Briscoes as, you know, past their prime in the slightest that there was no. like, bring these, bring these guys in there in their prime. And I think it's easy to imagine MJF getting really heightened by a good competitive Jay Briscoe feud. <laughs> Uh, that that would have been a lot of fun to see MJF scared for his life, running away from Jay Briscoe for months on end. As alluded um, to before, um, and I said said it during your, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery not allowing a tribute on air for Jay Briscoe, other than the uh, other than the uh, graphic at the top of the show. But AEW did tape a tribute show right after Dynamite last night that will appear on Honor Club and free on YouTube. 
Um, and I assume there will be some retrospectives on there that will be really, really tough to get through. Um, but yeah, Jay Briscoe dead at the age of 38, I believe. 38 mm. or 39, I can't remember. I think it was 38. Yeah, keep his kids in your prayers, even if you're not that type. Uh, they are. So I think they appreciate it. If there's a GoFundMe, I will be giving to them because those kids are going to have a tough road afterwards. I don't know. They may not be the type to ask for help, but uh, if they do, I will be giving it to them. Moving on, there was other news. Uh, thank you for indulging me on that, <laughs> Chris. Um, Nick Khan, the CEO, went on Bill Simmons' Ringer podcast, and boy, it makes you think. Number one, Bill Simmons, uh, absolute uh, nut hugger when it comes to the WWE. No offense to, I, I apologize for using that terminology. Yeah, but, as a proud nut hugger myself, Jeff, uh, I, I don't. Well, love that. I mean, I don't. But, I don't love it when you you bring up that kind of. Well, term. I mean, okay, I'm sorry, Bill Simmons, uh, WWE simp. If you want. <laughs> yeah. hey, a, as a simp, sir, <laughs> I, I I resent that statement. Try again. I have a negative opinion of Bill Simmons because he is as a overly, negative opinion because uh, 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 he's overly forgiving of WWE because he wants access and free tickets and he wants people to come on their shows and and hit the ringer podcast don't really go hard after WWE either because they're in these giant media conglomerates and blah 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 but good old Nick Khan still one of your CEOs of WWE went on there and had some quotes about Vince McMahon's comeback to the board I will give them to you now. They are not uh, in context, so uh, keep that in mind as well. But let's start with this. Uh, he, Vince McMahon, came back and took control back of his company as a controlling shareholder. It is a publicly traded company. But with that controlling share, they gave him a lot of authority, and he used it, and I applaud him for doing so. Quote, it was always my point of view and Stephanie's point of view that Vince McMahon would come back. My thought has always been that there's only one boss at WWE and it ain't me. Uh, furthermore, he in discussing some of Vince's prior indiscretions, using lines like, oh, it was a previous time and male and female relationships were different. I believe the exact term for the Rita Chatterton uh, lawsuit was a hindrance from another time. Now, as you listen to these quotes, keep this in mind. Nick Khan was also part of the board of directors that unanimous, unanimously rejected Vince McMahon's request to come back. This man is a killer, Chris. He is a stone-cold corporate showbiz slick hair, driving a McLaren killer. And he will survive no matter who is running that show. Yes. But is he still trying to ultimately get rid of Vince and just taking the submarine back underwater right now? I, I don't think it's that kind of thing. I don't think it's that kind of relationship. Just, just from knowing showbiz execs, and, you know, the types of people who get in the rat race, they love the rat race. But they don't think of themselves as rats. No. <laughs> and, and, and from having this conversation, you could try to explain to them that, like, you're in a maze and you explain all the contours. You see the walls? Do you see the pathways? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you see the cheese at the end of the hall? Yeah, yeah, I do. What do you think that makes you? I'm yeah. still a good person. No, no, oh. no, no. Let's wind this back again. Do you see the walls? Do you see the long pathway? Yeah. When Stephanie and Triple H had the upper hand, I think Nick Khan was all on uh, the Stephanie and Triple H train. Now that Vince has the upper hand, hey, man, what a what a bold public move that was. I'm still CEO. I'm still running the company. Oh, yeah, he's just coming back for right now to, you know, to facilitate a sale, et cetera, et cetera. I, I I just think he, he just know. I mean, <laughs> there's a quote I can't remember. It's at the end of Blood Meridian talking about the judge character, uh, Cormac McCarthy novel. 
really good novel. I really enjoy it. But it's like it's like one of those things where it's like you think the devil's dead and he just he's just there to fiddle and he's going to play forever type of a thing. That's what Nick Khan is to me. Nick Khan is the type of guy who doesn't matter what happens, doesn't matter who gets destroyed or anything like that. He's just there to play the fiddle. And, and, and hey, I can do my job well no matter who's here. My job right now is CEO. Ownership is their deal. That's what he's going to tell you in public. Behind the scenes, he might be wheeling and dealing. He might be the last man standing. I don't know. But for right now, I just think he is just kind of an empty vessel and you just fill it with whatever you want. That sounds right to me. Okay. I <laughs> know. Uh, I don't think that there's a moral core to Nick Khan. Yes. I think this is a guy who just likes power. And I think likes. that's the point. I think a lot of people look this look at this through the prism of a moral co- cord, as they say. And you got to understand, in show business, it's just about getting your product out there and making money and being able to get a nice table at a restaurant. that That's showbiz. <laughs> if you really want to know, the corporate side of showbiz, not the creative side. And yeah. I think that's all he is, and that's the world he came from. He came from a mega agency where you wheel and deal. And, you know, <laughs> if you've ever seen Swimming with Sharks, he's he's a Kevin Spacey type of character. You know, it's it's he's a demanding boss. Every underling will be abused probably because it's the type of jobs you everybody wants type of a thing. That is show business. That is the world you're choosing to. If you don't want to get into it, go be an accountant type of thing. And there's no... You know, even in the player, if you watch any movie about showbiz, you're going to see a character like Nick Khan in there. Just a guy who's like he's in the race and there's no time for sympathy and there's no time for, uh, hey, remember when I got the next deal to make. I got the next big thing to do. And you do that until you're 80 or 90. You retire rich and you go, huh, what now? (laughs) That is that is show business to me. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Follow up, Vince, Wall Street Journal today came out with an article that Vince McMahon has settled his lawsuit with Rita Chatterton, 80s referee, who accuses Vince McMahon of raping her in the back of a limousine. Um, Terms undisclosed, but in the millions. A hindrance from another time. Also a possible roadblock of a possible sale. Uh, rumored, according to the article in, in Wall Street Journal, it was done to avoid the litigation, not an admission of guilt, et cetera, et cetera, Chris. I mean, that's what they would say. <laughs> <laughs> look, look I, I, I mean... <laughs> I'm sorry, just the nonchalance of, yeah. I mean, no, it, 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 how many surprising. times have you seen this yes. movie in oh, the yeah. last 10 years? Oh, yeah. In a number of different arenas. Yes. Yes. That's how <laughs> that's how the settlement works. They but but then you have to ask yourself every single time, why is this asshole in court having to do a settlement? That's what I want, Chris. I want the fire. I want the fire from you because I can't get it up because I'm so cynical about these. No, things. It, it's it's <laughs> like I see the same movie at like weekend. <laughs> Week out. Thank you. Thank old, you for indulging me. Old guy who <laughs> who is powerful sleeps with woman probably 10 to 20 years ago. It finally arrives in court and then they settle and they want to go, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not culpable. No one will really know. Who is to say? But like, why are they there? Why are they there? Same reason Dominic Strauss Kahn was there. Like it's all it's all the same. <laughs> it's all the same. Speaking of which, <laughs> both Friday before SmackDown and Monday before Raw, all talent meeting by one Triple H, just to lay fears that he is still the man in charge and that Vince McMahon does not yet have anything to do with creative. If I may quote Charles Dance from Game of Thrones, if you have to tell people you're the king, you're not the king. Yeah, I, I mean, you wouldn't have to do an everything is fine press conference if everything was fine. <laughs> right? I mean, the, in the history, I, this is kind of like another thing you've seen in multiple I've been through a, I've been through, No, I've been through a takeover at, at my law firm or whatever, where, where, where it's like there's uncertainty going, and, hey, we just want to lay fears. 
And, and of course, people start asking the tough questions like, hey, uh, are any of us going to lose our jobs in this? Well, it's too early to tell in that. Let's just say, though, that we are a family right now. We're a family. <laughs> and the next several months are going to be a dynamic and potentially challenging time that we look to really maximize. It's really a time of opportunity, though, because this uncertainty, there will be new positions open. And, and obviously initiative is going to be rewarded. Yes, initiative will be rewarded. We will take everything to account. If there's any changes that need to be made employment-wise, we will be the first to communicate to you those openly because we want a transparent type of that. Yeah, and, and we'll get that information to you as soon as we have it. Yes, as soon that. as we have it, which means... <laughs> After we've made up our mind and we've yes. been discussing it for six weeks. I did it 30 minutes ago. Bring your key card. Bring your keys. We'll pack up your stuff from your desk. That is what that is. I just, I'm like, oh my, if I was rehired, I would be freaking the F out right now. I would. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> you know, if I'm, if I'm one of the many, you know, the, the, the Thanos. It's, no, it's been really interesting <laughs> that like for you, and it makes sense that like the FTR and the Briscoe stuff has been like the demoralizing dark night of the soul moment for you. For me, it has really been this rearrival of Vince McMahon. And nothing matters because nothing, no, nothing matters. Cause matters. He's always going to win. Right. Well, there's like that, but then like the, just even that moment in time where we're considering a potential sale to the Saudis. Like, I don't think I have the stomach to it's, do it's, a it's, weekly review on a Saudi owned product and help them in any way, shape or form. So like boost their signal with that sort of, you're thing. currently Jesse Pinkman screaming. How can he keep getting away with this? <laughs> On Breaking Bad, it's just like, do you know uh, that that was made in Albuquerque? Yeah, I do. And you're in yeah. city. Have you, have yeah, you done no. the tour yet? No, uh, I have places? not done the Breaking. No, oh, okay. no, yeah, tourist crap. Um, <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm going those, out to Madrid this weekend. But it's one of those things where it's also like, oh man, Stephanie and Vince, here they are. They might actually stand up to him, and then you're just kind of thinking as it all flies out. Well, maybe they were just. That, that's the other part. I, th I think that's the other, I did not copy that quote, but it's like, oh yeah, Vince went away for five or six months until things cooled down. But I think people are really happy to have him back. I think that's been enough cool down time. To, <laughs> you're just like, is anybody in this company going to point the figure and say, no, this is wrong because they're so afraid of the guy that created all of this coming down with the hammer of the gods on him. And you're just like, no, I get your dispiritedness about this. Yeah. I, <laughs> it, it's, this is not a great period of time for wrestling. No. I mean, oh, you're going to get some arguments though. You know, uh, did you watch AEW Dynamite? Did right. You know yes. Yes. Right. One, one program amounting to two hours. <laughs> You're talking about the general the... business. Yes. Right. <laughs> I no, I, I'm sorry, people. Uh, this is, you know, we'll get a little snippy dippies. Uh, okay. like they're, no, they're like, what, 12, 16 hours of wrestling on television? Just because two hours are good doesn't mean the whole thing is good right now. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, okay. It's, now yeah, I get to yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, it's not enough. Like, like the, my no. My hope was that the thing is, why do I sort of root a for WWE to boom period of creativity? Well, no, w, it's it's like there's that, but like I mean, I guess maybe it's a little more self invested, dude. Like, uh, yeah. it better WWE means on balance a much more enjoyable watching experience. Yes. Than me. yes, having to watch Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and then Dynamite. Okay, Dynamite's two hours. Of that Raw's three hours. SmackDown's two hours. NXT is two hours. Yeah, I want the seven hours of WWE programming to not suck because I don't have any idea how good the two hours of AEW programming would have to be to countervail it. Oh, but Chris, the two hours of AEW are much better when you watch the two hours of Dark, the two hours of Dark Elevation, the two hours of or the one hour of Rampage, the two hours of Battle of the Belts, you know, whatever. You know. No, and I, and I had the Brady Games Companion Guide to go along with all of this. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that would be fantastic. Or, or just get this. The main entree could be good. Well, you can take a little bit of solace in that. I think, uh, I think professional slap fighting only got like a two hundred ninety-five thousand viewers after nine after nine hundred sixty-nine thousand AEW viewing. Uh, no, I'm glad you circled back around to that because it did it did 
this sounds small, but like seeing a Dana White actualize yourself sort of quote like on my Instagram feed this week made me like irrationally <laughs> angry because I'm just like, no, no, don't put a effing wife beater on my feed and go like this Monday motivation. Okay, get and a little behind the scenes peek. Chris was also irrationally angry because a friend of mine got cloned. He's like, can you tell him to stop talking to me about crypto? <laughs> I'm like, I don't think he's ever even heard done crypto. <laughs> of course you you, uh, yeah, I mean, you didn't, you didn't even bring up my high quality pun of the man's on the block and roll express. That's wrestling related. And you were just going to let that die in the DMs. <laughs> you suck. I do. I'll you do? Pull. No, you suck. Yes, suck. and. Yes, and. I will. Okay, yes. That'll, that'll be our promo we cut, because, again, behind the scenes, we need to cut a promo for our show. It's like, yes, Jeff sucks. That'll be the promo. On the Block <laughs> and Roll Express, my friend. <laughs> oh, uh, comings and goings. Interesting. Kazarian officially signed with Impact Wrestling. Uh, several had been questioning the status of his AEW deal, but he wanted to work more and be more in the ring at his age and, and said, Hey, look, I want to work more. I'm going to impact. So he's also been officially removed from the AEW roster page. Also out right now, AQA former NXT talent also had signed with AEW. She's been removed from the roster page uh, cause her deal is up. And she had announced in July that she was stepping away from the company. Um, I think, look, man, if Kazarian at his age wants to work and can still go good for him, go work where you want and where you can make the most money, especially especially as you're nearing 50. Uh, I've always liked what we've seen from Kazarian yeah. in, the, in, in the splashes that we've seen him on AEW television. Yeah, he, he looks good um, as he's advancing 50 or coming up on 50. He is uh, a guy I had to get used to because I did yep. not like him in TNA uh, when he was doing Fortune. I always thought he was like a throw in type of thing. No, it was, it was a bad influence that really made it click for me with him. that too. Yeah. No, him and him and uh, him and Daniel Daniels, Daniels doing, yeah, yeah. doing the Apple teeny gimmicks and just, but yeah, no, I, that's when it came around to me. And then, you know, getting to meet him on the way to new Orleans for uh WrestleMania. Uh, that was, that was a kick. And I, his promos never did much for me, but I always thought he was a r- pretty smooth Worker, yeah, he's so really he well him. rounded in the ring. I'm with you. Like, no, the promos are nothing, but like, he in the ring, he's got a lot of. He's he's just a more diverse move set than you might yeah. think. Yeah, and AQA, I think. Oh, I mean, boy, I saw her on NXT, and I thought she had potential. I forgot her her name there. And well, I, you and and that's a shame because they got like two or three names there. Yeah, and then and then it was like a quarter life crisis, I think, and she's just like, I don't want to do this anymore, and I understand that, but yeah, that's kind of a tragedy for me because I was really looking forward to her in AEW and seeing if she could go. But uh, hey, do what's best for your mental health and also get paid. That'll do it for the news section. Now the lazy river of wrestling criticism. Whatever's on our mind, whatever is. Uh, happening in the world of wrestling we will talk about it it'll depend on what we watched as well because i didn't watch a few things chris didn't watch a few things we'll just bring up what we saw and chris this weekend of interest to both of us the long dead patreon if any of you actually listen to any of those shows that i didn't release for free we did a comparison between uh muda and uh Hi- not hayabusa um Jinsei Shinsaki. Jinsei Shinsaki. Thank you. Also known as Hakushi in WWE. I was trying to think of Hakushi and I couldn't come up with that name. But he's doing a comeback match right now. This weekend is the six man match with Sting, Darby Allen, and Muda. And on the other side is Hakushi and Akira. And I forget the third person. It's, the name is escaping me. Will you be seeking that out at some point? Because I am definitely interested in seeing Muda and Sting teaming up for this last time. Yeah, I I, I, I think I got to. Uh, I mean, I know it's just going to be a play the hits little thing, but I think it'll be good. And that match is going to need someone on each team to work. And Shinsaki actually is not ad still like, like i he, think he, i will he, look up who the yeah. other who the other team is while we talk here but it's one of those things where yeah i'm gonna have to, old man muda is working smart not hard i think darby's gonna be really the guy to throw himself all over yeah. the place uh but he is doing the hakushi gimmick for this match as i recall oh it's marafuji okay yes. it's, it's it's hakushi akira and, and marafuji 
facing Sting Darby Allen and the great Muda in his quote unquote final bout as Muda. So yeah, I am uh, definitely all in on that. Uh, Chris, give me something that you liked or that's something that you want to talk about uh, that you saw this week. Man, so I did see a fair amount of like things this week. Oh, and, it's, gonna be, it, it's gonna be one of those shows. Okay, we can deal with it. <laughs> no, it, it it's not that. It's it's that like WWE televisions kind of once again arrived at that like I don't know that I really care as I watch this stuff. Right. Um. Even every, on the road to the Rumble, it makes it seem like it's so insignificant. No, I because it, it's super not. We're back to the non-committal thing. Yeah, ba- yeah, we we very much fall. I mean, yeah, you got the bloodline in place there, but like like everything else is is kind of the painting in unconfident strokes sort of thing. But even uh, the bloodline thing it has is right. now showing cracks because it's the same we don't trust Sammy thing yep. every week type of, yep. and that's not the interesting choice. And we said that when this was going down, that the interesting choice would be go all in on loving Sammy. And making him a part of your crew. And then maybe Sammy ends up being the guy who accidentally or on purposes starts sowing doubt amongst the other members of the bloodline to maybe turn on Roman. And yeah, I, I, I watch this and I just go, Oh, it's going to be the same abuse Sammy every week. That was even before that war games match. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Um, Lyra Valkyria. Made her return to NXT this week. I know you're excited about that. <laughs> I did not watch NXT this week. Um, no, I just thought I would mention that because, like, you know, I know, up. I know, I owe you of uh, Valkyrie well, was like one of your least favorite wrestlers. Oh, geez, it was it a a o i f e? Uh, yeah, it was every vowel you could possibly yeah, squeeze it, it, in. It was the wheel except of fortune, for you. Waste of money. Yeah. Yes. Um. Well, you did see some Raw, so I will bring up the one thing that really stuck in my craw about Raw was that Bailey and Becky promo for um for for Raw thirty next week, which is God. Every every guy that they've brought for every other reunion show coming for Raw and that we see like every two months. Hooray. Um but I really hate when they do the revised history of things that we already know type of a thing. And you know, I love me some Becky and you know, I love me some aunt Pam, but this, this thing that Becky was saying about, about, well, I wasn't getting chances that you were Bailey. Well, until I became the man, I was just like, hold up here. Cause Bailey did speak some truth. Hey, I'm the one who was left behind in NXT. I was the one, this, that, and the other, I'm the one who should have the chip on my shoulder. It's not like, I mean, Becky was over getting pushed as SmackDown champion when Bailey was losing to Alexa Bliss by getting, because she was afraid to use a kendo stick, if you recall. It's not like Vince McMahon took great care of the Bailey character when she came up. And look, both Bailey and Becky were in dire straits when the man thing just fell in their lap. And God knows WWE did their best to screw that up at that revolution pay-per-view, the all women thing that they did uh, in response to doing a show in Saudi Arabia, where for three fourths of that uh, street fight or anything goes match between Charlotte and Becky, they're trying to turn Becky heel, trying to do that on heel and the crowd won't let them. And they're still going with it. I, I just, I, I hated this promo so much, Chris, because I just wish they'd let them really talk at each other and build a real feud as opposed to a feud on contrived, fake history i agree <laughs> uh i have no I, I i i just making sure i remember my thoughts here so sometimes when we talk about wwe like we don't get super in depth or critical about stuff and i want to make it clear that that is oftentimes for me because i find stuff yes. to be so stupid or yes. boring that it doesn't actually merit it doesn't, it just doesn't even register. It's not that I liked it or that like I'm tacitly endorsing it. It's if anything, right. it's probably a tacit criticism that like, right. I like, even like Chris, like, I'll give you an example. I don't give a damn about uncle howdy. Right. 
Right. We have not done, <laughs> no, I, like we have not done a big rant on Uncle Howdy because like it, it sucks. It sucks, <laughs> right? It's yet another shitty Bray Wyatt thing that they started. They half-assed with the Alice in Wonderland crap, and then they got scared of their own shadow on that. There's supposed to be some big faction. It's never gone anywhere. And guess what? It's just like every other Bray Wyatt thing you've ever yes. seen. Every single time. It's the wave at the beach that you think is going to be killer when it finally comes. And it's just a little wimp. Yes. Every single time. That is Bray Wyatt. And I don't have a lot of new ground or new insight on that. Or even, honestly, like, I don't keep an eye on it. Because, I, I mean, I guess if Uncle Howdy did some interesting crap at some point, I, I'll, I, I would have something to say, like, wow, this is the first time in literally years Bray Wyatt's done something that's interests me remotely. Um so the only, like, sometimes I guess we are only talking about the good stuff because it seems so few and far between over seven hours of television every week. Um, for me, right now, like, the only thing that I can, when I'm re-looking at the show slate of Raw here, the only good thing was that opening segment with Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> God, God, he gets better every week, Jeff. Like, uh, like, Chris, I have some news for you. You know who's helping Dominic on this whole thing? Who? Conan. Really? Which is why he's doing the Conan cosplay. That, that, I mean, no, it worked for him, but like, yes, I wish, I wish I had written down which line that he said, like, Oh, you oh said, Hey, you yeah, I said it to you, like, Hey, don't talk bad about jail or don't talk that way about jail. Like, <laughs> like it's a member of the family yeah. and he said it perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I mean, he, he really gets, this phony tough character like he's doing a really good job with it guys like i i never thought i would say that about dominic mysterio but like this they you know what i need i need i don't know if, i don't know if they did this on raw because i might have missed this but ha, but has uh dominic said you know what i could think i could handle a day in the uso penitentiary I need him to say something about the uso penitentiary and how it, i've done real time yeah you think the use of penitentiary is bad? Try jail. Try jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's perfect. That's what I want. That's 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 what I'm dying for. If they get to me, I'm here for it. I am so I, I agree. The com and the comedy coming out of out of the judgment nights. The, no, they're all the, the judgment guys, they're all really good. I I, I mean they're the all judge strong. All no, of them. all of them. Rhea's great. Um, Finn and uh, uh, Punishment Martinez. Uh, what's his name? Damian Priest. Damian um, Priest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like they're they're all. Everyone's doing a really good job. But no, I I really do tip my cap to Dominic. Um, that like he's doing really good character acting. It's it's like, it's, it's night fun. and day compared to the crap with his dad. It yes, it really is. It is. It is. I mean, and, and he's. I mean, he's. In on the joke. It's, yes. it's perfect. No, it's yes. perfect. I think, yeah. Um, do you want to do uh, NXT? Um, because I don't have anything because I didn't watch it. Um, I mean, then... okay. So there's, uh, yeah, I'll give you my two notes on NXT here right quick then. Because okay. uh, not, not, neither of these are particularly long. Um, JC and Gigi. Uh, JC is continuing to get more and more kind of traction. Um, like the... Yeah. Removal of Mandy Rose, who's the, who's been the winner so far. It's it's JC. Uh, she's you know she like, yeah she's, no no and, and she, she's stepping she, up in the vacuum. Yeah, she's cut better promos week after week. I I, I expect nothing less. Yeah. No, I know. I I really just she, her delivery. It, w I, you said this before, but I really like I was really cued on into it this week. Her delivery on crappy material is still good, and yeah. I just like for me, it's I'm waiting for that moment where JC Jane has a promo that gets like kind of the broader people's attention of like her skill level. And it will be a, uh, well, yeah, no, we, we knew this was coming. Like, like we will have seen it coming. On yeah. We're one. early on the bandwagon. It's yeah. Kind of no, even... no. Eventually people are going to want to get on the JC Jane bag. Yeah, she, so she's, she's real good. She's she real good. Y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, there's um, other than that. I mean, uh, the only other thing was Tony D'Angelo promoting <laughs> Channing Stax Lorenzo to the underboss. But th this arrives at this great moment, Jeff, where Stax accepts, like, is like, you know, uh, D'Angelo is sort of doing like the mafia boss, like, you know, let's go out to the bridge. I need to talk to you, sort of thing. Like, and 
you know, like he's going to get whacked or something like that for right. reasons. Yeah. And it stacks. is just like, I'm ready. Take me out boss. Like he's like ready to get killed by Tony. <laughs> and then he gets promoted. <laughs> now was, he's the other boss. I was waiting for the Joe Pesci he brings him into like an empty place. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. This is what, that's where we're going to do the ceremony. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, 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 but like, like basically, like Stack shows him his neck and is like, you know, make it swift, boss. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, other than that, uh, I, you know, I, I, I ain't got much here. Okay, uh, yeah. I will, I will go then. Uh, yeah, look, there was great wrestling on Dynamite. If you're into great wrestling, it was actually a very fun show. Kushida showed up and faced Darby Allen, which was a great match. Don't get me wrong. We'll, we'll get, may get a little bit into there. I'm going to get into the top flight Young Bucks match in a second. But the best match I saw all week, get ready for it, people, because you're going to be disappointed in me, and I don't care. Rampage, last Friday night. The street fight between Anna Jay and Tay Mello versus Ruby, Riot, or Ruby Soho and Willow Nightingale. I adore Anna Jay and Ty Mello as street fighters. They are so absolutely ridiculous. They are so out of place. And I think, as we said last week, the great thing about them in street fights, and we saw this in the match in 2021, this in New Year's Eve 2021, the match against Penelope Ford and the Bunny, is that street fights become life and death struggles in real life for these two. And it's fantastic. It ain't clean wrestling. It ain't great, but they are game and they are game for the pain. And I adore these two. Ruby Soho, Chris, a little uh, controversy in the wrestling zeitgeist Twitter this week uh, because during the match, she bladed and she bladed hard. Um, just crimson mask all over the place. And there were, there are some old school types who were, you know, and, you know, maybe even some new school types who are like I, a little bit squeamish about the amount of blood that, that she had. I don't know if you have any personal objection to that. I am, I'm on a case by case basis, but I'm mostly fine with it. Um, yeah, I, I think that's, that's okay. my general. Yeah. Um, the last stanza in here where a bloody Ruby is, is, is trying to get her bearings uh, there's also a spot here before they were dressed as the Dudley boys and they decide to power bomb Anna J through a table. Willow does. And Anna J completely misses the table. She is reported to be okay, but uh, let's, let's not do that spot ever again. Uh, but at towards the end, it, it's, it's Tay being it, or Ty being Ty doing the heavy character work, the over the top stuff that, you know, she does when she's deciding to play wrestler with the thumbtacks and everything. And it's just absolutely fantastic. And of course she gets hoisted on her own petard and gets slammed into the thumbtacks herself for the one, two, three. I adore this match for the rampant stupidity and violence that it was go out of your way. If you haven't seen it, if you don't watch rampage to watch this street fight, I absolutely adored it. Dynamite again, a great show for wrestling because you had Brian Danielson no, this is maybe their best like show for wrestling card that they've put together in a couple of months. Yeah, uh, yeah um, no, no. Uh, I guess so. Uh, and look, it, it's it's hard to really. You and I are not wrestlers. No, have never wrestled. Uh, I have. Okay, well, once all time you did once. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah right, yeah, right. The, I'm on one okay. show. Yes, Jeff. I also have head coach basketball no, 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 experience, no, 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 and I'm no, zero no, and no, one. No. Chris, Chris, I'm not doing the stolen valor thing. I'm not saying I was a worker. I'm just saying I had no, 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 no. I, no, I, I mean, like I would. I know you you're not correct. trying to. You are correct yeah. in your assessment. No, like, yeah, like, like no, it, in the same way that, like, if I was, <laughs> we were doing a basketball show, I would never invoke the one time I was the coach of the Arlington Bulldogs. <laughs> yeah, but yes. that would be like, that would be, be the most ridiculous thing to do. But please um, continue. I'm sorry. So, like, it's tough when wrestling is super well executed to give a lot of like depth to it, right? Like Brian Danielson had a good match. Is that? I, th I think the interesting thing here, though, right? was, was the was the uh, the opponent was Bandito. Right, right, right. Uh, I, I was and actually I was trying to talk about Hager and Starks, which was actually. We'll, we'll get to that in a okay, second because okay. that's in my 
not so good stuff for a reason. Well, no, I know, but yeah, that that was actually I was not trying to make a half acid uh, point about Bandito and Danielson. So okay, no, 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 understood. Um, the interesting thing about this match was it wasn't a Bandito match; it was a Brian Danielson. I'm gonna make this guy work the mat a little bit type of match, which I think is gonna be this run. This run is gonna be into the story of MJF not being a technically superior wrestler who can go for sixty minutes, and I think Brian Danielson as a performer has just decided i'm gonna take certain guys and i'm gonna make them do a technical technically sound match to take them out of their comfort zone and i'm gonna make it a good match because next week there there was an angle uh, last night it's gonna be brian cage and brian danielson now i am not the biggest brian cage fan in the world uh but that's mostly because i have to watch i've had to watch brian cage matches when he wrestles somebody else's style or I'll tell you one thing, there was a match on Dark or Dark Elevation. It was a squash against a Shaft from, from the Defy territory up there in the Northwest. That was better than it had any right to be because Brian Cage was selling for a big guy, which is always interesting to see because usually Brian Cage is the biggest guy in a match. Um, But I think that's going to be the run here is taking guys who, you know, oh, he's a high flyer. Now he's going to be, t- I would not be surprised if he does a match with, uh, penta at some point doing this type of style so that was very interesting Kashida got his, some of his mojo back against darby and that was a very interesting match too you know a lot more technicalities out of out of or technical stuff out of Kashida than we're used to uh since new japan at least i mean his wwe run never really bought into this i am i'm waiting for him to now ditch the back to the future stuff and just be old grizzled vet um, I, I'm with you on that. Well, real quickly, though, you, you moved away from Danielson and Ben. Okay, yeah, Jesus. go ahead and circle back for me. <laughs> yes. Here is my question. Are we getting to a point where we credibly believe Danielson can beat MJF? Because that, to me, is what these matches need to be in narrative service of. I think these are all really well executed matches. I think, like, and they're interesting, and, like, they're, they're Danielson's doing cool stuff, but. I, like I need M. It doesn't feel like MJF is scared enough of losing his title right now. It, it this should feel increasingly existential. It the we're getting there though. I will I will I will pu- push back a little bit because okay there was a, okay. There's a there's a promo by MJF. I'm, that's why I'm just asking it as yeah. a question here. Yeah. Because I, but that to me is the like when I'm watching these matches, that to me is what pops into my head. Okay. It's like, okay, like this is a this is a fight sequence, like you know, if you're watching Cobra Kai or something like that. What's the fight sequence in service of? And is this fight sequence helping to advance the the broader plot here? And like what I for me, this will be successful as a build if we arrive to the MGF title match. And it legitimately looks like MJF is, you know, in danger of losing his title, even if grizzled wrestling critic Chris knows better. Well, I, I think for me, the problem is the story is that and it, it's it's beca- it, the danger here is we need to see some credibility from MJF as a technical wrestler, because that's the whole this whole story is that MJF is a fraud and he's afraid of the 60 minute match because he's a fraud. And I think that's going to be the problem more so than can Danielson beat him. Problem is everybody knows Danielson can beat him. That's the that's the secondary. St- I mean, everyone knows that Danielson, like, I guess in 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 kayfabe, it, like yes. that, yeah, like, in K- yeah. I'm trying to think of like, but like, I outside of kayfabe, like in the business realm here, we know that Danielson can't beat MJ up because that right. would be like a really weird move for them to do right now. Um. And I think you've arrived at the second weird wrinkle in the storytelling here for me, which is like, you know, how are we, does this match end with MJF proving that he's a better technical wrestler than Brian Danielson? Well, or does this end end with him banana peeling Danielson? We've had a wrinkle because we have returned to an old school trope that I'm here for that I have called for Chris MJF has decided to give Brian Cage and Prince Nana money, hard more money than they've ever seen, allegedly, although Prince Nana is both a prince and has bought out Tully Blanchard Enterprises. He wants Brian Cage to break Brian Danielson's arm in the match. Win, lose, or draw. And I'm here for this story. 
because I think he needs to break it. I think somebody needs to break in, and then, and then Brian Danielson needs to overcome the arm thing while wrestling Max, because it's obvious that Brian Danielson is far more of a superior map technician than MJF is. So he needs a weakness, and I think we're gonna get it. And I think I think we should wait till next week, and then we can really go into how dumb this program is if we need to. Or how yeah, well, well, yeah, I again, I I don't want it to sound like I'm tuning up the band, right? Or a this is dumb promo or something next week. I, I I'm not. It, it, the injury thing could very well be the out. Um, okay. And, and you know, I am sort of letting this play out a little bit. Although I, I guess what I worry about with MJF is it kind of feels like it's all going to be banana peel wits. Yes. Because, and, and I'll tell I'll, I'll, I'll also give you a little bit of context about the promo because he goes, you've only been seeing me with my mask up until this point, but that mask is starting to slip type of a thing where I like to keep things light, but now I'm going into my dark place type of a thing. So you have that added in as well. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. We'll yeah, see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, interesting enough, um, Top Flight beat the Young Bucks in hour one with a roll-up type of move. It wasn't with the finisher or anything, but uh, it was a clean-as-a-sheet win. Top Flight over the Young Bucks. I push back on the thinking on this, not because of the win, but of the placement. This should have been the main event and should be treated as a far bigger deal to me is this young up and coming team getting a clean win over the, the established stars of the tag team division. And it was really just, it was a win and then kind of a to the back type of thing. And you know, I understand Kushida and Darby is a big deal to wrestling fans, but I thought this might have been one of those, hey, we need the locker room to come out and celebrate that and, and put over that top flight are now players in the tag team division. I think they undersold this way too much. And my fear is that this is just a setup for a trios title match with top flight and AR Fox, where AR a- a- Fox loses. We forget that top flight beat the Bucks until two years later when the Bucks have the have the tag titles and we do a rematch. Oh yeah. Remember long term, t- long term storytelling. We, they, they got a clean win two years ago type of a thing, but it was a very good match. I mean, it, it, it was a standard, you know, young bucks spot, 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 spot with top flight. And it was very, very good for what it was. It was just one of those things where I just thought, wow, we have decided to poo poo this way too quick. If we want to make a big deal out of top flight now being top guys in the division. All right, so let's circle back now to the Jericho world because yes, because this is a this is what I was going to end on. So let's no, the, the, this this matters to me. We have watched the Jericho star making experience a number of times now. Okay, and he doesn't make stars; he makes black holes. He Ricky's was, his, his, he doesn't help. He no, takes energy I, out. I think his instincts to be with the new young cool guy. And to help the new young cool guy are a little self-serving. I'm being generous, I think, there. But they're also very, I mean, this is the Stanford playbook that they're doing with him, with Ricky Starks. And this was, this match with Hager. Look, I I got a little bit of blowback about no, some uh, of my you, phrasing and right, I'm going to address it. No, I want to defend you before you defend yourself, Hawkins. Okay. This time I'm taking the bullet. Mm. I am like Stax Lorenzo getting ready to take it on the chin for D'Angelo. You're D'Angelo here. You're the mob boss. I'm Thank the you. underboss. Now. Thank you for yes. explaining that. I, I, no, I love you, Jeff. Um, <laughs> so we have had trouble sort of encapsulating what isn't clicking with Ricky Starks. And last week we were trying to find the right words in real time with Ricky Starks. But I think it's certainly fair to say, like, this is not the best presentation of this guy. Uh, There's, I I feel like I sort of nailed, like, there's like a weird, like, thinness to his frame that he does certain poses and it makes him, like, look two and a half dimensional. Um, But, no, I want to exonerate you because it is hard to truly even with time and space away from it, look again, I can't quite come up with the word 
for what it is about Starks, it's not happening right now. It, uh, but I know it's not happening. It's not happening. I think that's that's the point we will we will move on with because he's doing the things that it feels like Jericho has given him stage notes for. It feels like, okay, you're going to do your pose here in the middle of your comeback type of a thing. It's like, no, he, he, you're going to wear the Hager purple hat while doing the rope walk dance type of thing. I'm just like, these feel like a mid card WWE type of thing, not a star making type of a thing, but it feels like this is, this is here's how we're going to give you the personality type of thing. And then I don't even think those were the worst crimes against Ricky stars. I think the biggest crime against Ricky stars and, and I will explain what happened. If you did not read this is Jericho, um, Jericho, uh, the, 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 God, I'm trying to think of the two other members of the JAS that were with him. It, it's uh, uh, the kid from Bo- and, uh, oh, uh, no, 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 the Daniel other Garcia two. and Daniel Sammy Gar- Guevara. Thank you, J- Daniel Garcia and Sammy Guevara are there, and Jericho is saying, saying, you know what? If you uh, he calls number one, he calls Action Andretti an orphan the night after. <laughs> Just read the room, dude. Don't do that when when you, when you have kids who just lost a father, please. Um, but it's like okay, he's gonna challenge, uh, Action Andretti and Ricky Starks to a tag match, and he's gonna bring in, um, uh, less sex gods with with Sammy Guevara, and so we're gonna get a little bit of this split with Guevara. Uh, uh, Give me the other guy's name real quick, and I'm blanking. For Andretti I think against no, Andretti. No, 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 no. With Guevara oh, Garcia. in the Garcia? J- Garcia. Thank you. And so Garcia goes, no, no, no. I want to be your partner this week, Chris, because I want to prove myself. And, and and you know whatever. I I beat him once. I want to beat him again. Type of a thing. And and Guevara's being kind of the weasel. Oh yeah, no, you can have my spot because I think I think Garcia's facing Action Andretti on on rampage so if he wins he gets to be part of the tag match with chris jericho and then and then Guevara ends it with and i got you this new gear and it's leather pants and so we're playing the garcia's not really a sports entertainer or has reservations about he wants to be a wrestler type thing all over again we've literally gone back to square one here and it's all this goofy mid-card comedy in a weird attempt to get Sammy or to get uh, Ricky Starks over as a quote unquote, taking it to the next level baby face, but we're still stuck in Midgardville with him now again. And I'm just like, I don't understand. I mean, Oh, if he wins this feud, then he'll go on to somebody bigger. Really? Then let's just start with that because I agree. These instincts are bad. And we we've talked about this before is that Jericho has never really, helped elevate a guy to that next level in my opinion while in aew unless he was the guy on top when he had the world title yes he did since then his instincts have been hit or miss to me he wants to be with the with the guy who's cool and current because it helps keep him cool and current and i think he genuinely wants to help people don't get me wrong i'm not saying this as a cynical move. I think he No, generally... I, I do think he wants to help people. I just don't think he knows how to. I, I think his instincts it, are do what no, this does. Right, right. No, he's just got bad instincts. Like, he yes. doesn't know how to make Darby Allen a bigger star. I agree. He doesn't know how to make MJF a bigger star. He doesn't know how to make Ricky Starks a bigger star. He knows I, how to be entertaining. Yes, I, 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 I don't know his heart, Jeff. I can't speak to the nature of his heart, but... <laughs> I can speak to the nature of his results. I can speak and, to and the they nature of doing a musical act with MJF. I right, just... right. I can speak to the results, and they're not good. Right. They're, they're not good. They don't help. MJF is not better for having done a Family Guy musical number with, with Chris Jericho. I agree. He is and not. I, yes. With that, yeah. we will close up the Lazy River. This has been Shake Them Ropes. You can follow me at Crap Game 13 on Twitter. You can follow the show at Shake Them Ropes, all one word. We are proud to be part of the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. If you want more Jeff Hawkins content, and God knows, I don't know why, but maybe you do. They're making I'm, I'm, that now? I'm feeling a little bit down on oh, me crap. today. Um, 
<laughs> five five bucks fight game media patreon.com slash fight game media for five bucks i do a show called the dynamite show hot takes and a thorough deconstruction of wednesday's dynamite that usually records about five to ten minutes right after the show goes up about an hour and a half after the show do that with paul fontaine he's a very nice gentleman enjoying nxt and the orlando sites this week go follow him on twitter himself chris has an instagram account dr one word underscore nov he plays the drums does the guitar yeah I, I do play drums yeah no that's fair that's fair well you're learning to play drums yeah I, yeah it, it's it's like why? yeah i mean why yeah. um Get just better on guitar the, I, I mean no i, I <laughs> look i i recently you learned a how one to man play. band now you gotta like have a bass drum on your back I, I i learned all the chords on guitar so i thought i thought it was time to move <laughs> on to drums do your plugs i apologize no you're fine um look uh if, if you're you got the extra time here this weekend i'd love to see you out in madrid new mexico <laughs> i think it's madrid but go ahead no no it's actually it's not madrid? it's madrid it's got like uh, yeah. houston and houston and new no York no and or, or 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 versailles Okay, um, that's yeah, true. yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's several places that yes, it should be one way. Or like, um, uh, Italy, Texas does that too, I think. Um, but anyways, uh, <laughs> point being, I'll be out there, and also, again, very conveniently located. Would love to see you all out in Tucumcari, halfway between Amarillo and Albuquerque. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> you were just, you're, are you in like Bob's bar? It, and yeah, it, 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 on my <laughs> tour of places with fifty people. People are less. This is a place that the Blues Brothers wouldn't even. Go I am <laughs> bringing music to people named Michael. Like I can name the entire audience. I'll be doing a short handshake afterwards. Are, th- are these country gigs? Yeah, either country. Okay, gigs. cool. Yeah, yeah. no, no. So, I, so, 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 redo them without my input, please. No, I. I yeah, no. That's all I've got. I mean, like, no one's come. No one's driving out. No one's to coming. Madrid. No, no I, one's I'm showing away. up. I, I'm not worried. You could go and follow Hondo Coyote on Instagram. That would help oh, us. No, go. like for no, for real. Like if, if I mean, even if you don't, and most of you don't live there, you would help me get the band booked at other places if you'd go and follow us on Instagram. So go and look up Hondo H O N D O Coyote, like Coyote. Um, and uh, please do that. Also, I need to shout out my boy, uh, my bartender on Tuesday night, who is a professional wrestler named Roland Steele. Um, he is America's golden boy, B O I on Instagram. So everyone, please go and follow my boy, Roland Steele, America's golden boy. Good dude. I'll be seeing him on Tuesday night. Good bartender. Nice man. Watch your Jay Briscoe promos and matches in between your football kids. Have a good weekend.